Hey, Blastroid, back again yet with another satisfactory mini game. In the video description, you'll have the download link, but this time we are offering up Electronic Battleship. This is my third iteration of Battleship in Satisfactory. The first couple were paint games, but this time we went all out and created Electronic Battleship. Basically what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using power switches to set your ships and then to do your guessing. And the board is going to let you know, did you hit, did you miss, or did you win the game? So let's show you exactly how it works and then we'll go behind the scenes to actually show you how it got made. So let's go over here to the instruction board. And you'll see the first thing is to use the ship setup room to set all your ships up. Take turns guessing plot points to sink and all opposing ships to win. There are 17 hits that are needed to win. If you see silica come out the wall, that means you missed. And if you see turbo peel, that means you hit. And also to make things interesting, the first player to grab the golden nut from the observation deck goes first. And you'll see right here we have our observation deck. If I run up here, we have the golden nut. If you grab it, you get to go first. The observation deck is pretty cool. It's all your friends can hang out and... Um, you know, start yelling, B5, it's B5, go there. I've also created a thing of party poppers. For example, you can grab some noblest and every time somebody makes a hit, maybe throw a noblest in the room and just have a blast with it. Also in the observation deck, you can go and see how the other players set up their ships. So here's a ship setup room for player number one. And the board will light up whichever levers they pull to show you exactly where their ships are located. Now, one thing, don't share this information with the other player. We're trying to keep this fair, but it's just so you have some knowledge that the other player does and you can see how the game goes. Also got some hilarious jokes in here. Everybody loves the dad jokes. Not everyone likes to play Battleship. It's hit or miss, or my favorite. Which space on a Battleship grid guarantees victory? I won. All right, let's go downstairs and actually play the game. I'm not going to do a full game here. I'm, I'm the only one here. It's kind of lonely right now. But we'll go to the player one ship setup room. And there's a quite a few ships here. Let's look at the instructions. Set up all your ships horizontally or vertically. There are five ships of different sizes. Carrier is a five length. Battleship four, cruiser three, submarine three, and destroyer two. Let's try to set up that destroyer two real quick. Uh, we're going to go over here. Let's do H7 and H8. So I'll pull H7 and H8. They're lit up on the board here so we can easily tell where we have set our ships. Typically I'd, I need to place all five ships, but with this demo we're just going to do the two there. Alright, there is one thing that you have to be aware of. If you make a mistake, you will need to reload the save file. There's logic that's happening behind the scenes, which we're going to see in just a minute. Um, so once you pull that switch, you've already activated something. So if you accidentally pulled the wrong switch, you are going to have to reload. Just don't make any mistakes. It's that simple. Alright, so I've set up a ship on player one. I'm now going to pretend I am player two, and I'm going to start guessing. So let's say, for example, I guess J5. We look up here for J5, and we see we have Silica came out. It's not a hit. So let's go up here to H, was it 7 and 8, I think? H7 is where we put a ship. Yep, and we have Turbo Peel pop out. And I think the other one is H8. Boom, we just now sunk that ship. Now, on some versions of Battleship, you tell the user, hey, you just sunk my whatever. But this game, you're not going to do that. We're playing advanced rules here. And the reason you can do that, you can actually butt your ships up together. And for example, let's put a three ship and a two ship together. Well, they may think they saw, uh, shot, um, sunk my cruiser because it's a five ship. But really, it was a three and a two. So you can kind of play uh, mind games with the way you set up your ships. But you don't have to tell them that they're actually sunk. And the game board will actually let you know when you win the game. After 17 hits and all the ships have been sunk, a star will appear. It takes about 30 seconds to build um, because some things are going on behind the scenes. Speaking of going on behind the scenes, let's go ahead and take a look behind the scenes and see how everything got made. So we'll go over here to one of the ship setup rooms. And in here I have a behind the scenes tour. So let's enter that tour. Alright, so we have a kind of a moving walkway tour. Um, 
there are some warnings here. There may be clipping, bloating, and other bad buildings behind these doors. Alright, let's just go ahead and hop on and see where it takes us. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hop it up and show you a little bit more than the, what the tour would. But this is the underbelly of all our game boards. We have our player one game setup board. We have our player one guest board. And then on the other side is the player two guest board followed by the player two ship board. And you can see all 400 power switches here. Now we have to bring um, 800 cables because one for power and then one for our logic system and we're going to actually take more detailed look of how this logic system actually works here but quite a few cables the logistics of managing these cables is crazy now the cables really are just set up in one spot but i have to bring them to the game board from really far distances so trying to manage 400 cables from the game logic boards you could tell was quite a feat there's a couple of facts here. Over 163 kilometers of cables used. That's 4,400 cables. 44, yeah, 4,400 cables used. Wow. 2,800 wall outlets were used. 2,500 signs were placed. A lot of these were just so I don't go crazy of where everything at. So I have a lot of signs labeling my logic behind the scenes here. Um, and then let's see. It took five days to build. And there are 600 truck stations, and these were create, used to create the logic gates, which we're about to demo here. So let's go ahead and hop back on our belt, and I'll show you how it works. My goodness, every time I see this, I'm like, yep, I went crazy there, I went crazy there, I definitely went crazy over here. Alright, so the tour takes you over here to our logic board, and we have everything kind of diagrammed, but you don't have to really worry about the diagram, because I actually have a physical working demo that we can pull the switches and see it actually working in real time. Let's look at some notes real quick. Although this entire build can be done in vanilla, there are no mods used whatsoever, but there were some save edits, and we'll explain that. Um, 200 logic rooms were copied via the satisfactory calculator. So I created one logic room, copied it 10 times, copied that 10 times, and then copied that 100 block one more time. So I did not hand build every single logic board. That would just, I, I wanted to get this done quick. So we did cheat a little bit and copy and paste using satisfactory calculator, great website. Uh, the hit or miss belts, I teleported to the board using the save editor. And the reason I did that is you're going to pull the lever and silica or turbo fuel is going to come out and it may come out from way up there or way over there and i don't want you to pull a lever and wait 30 seconds to see oh i got a hit you know that'd just be boring so i went ahead and just took the, tel the little belt and moved it over to the game board so it's almost instantly shown on the game board all right and then everything else was hand built. We did we did jet packs, we did hover packs, we did scaffolding. Everything was hand placed in this world. After that, those things there. Now there are 600 truck stations used because every logic room has three truck stations truck stations to use. And I'll explain what, how you use those for logic. The most difficult part of this build was extending those 400 wires. Even the smallest change usually took 100 to 400 times of duplication. So example, um, I wanted the grid background color on the sign to be darker green. Well, I had to change that 400 times on the game board. So you, you need to make your decisions and keep them. <laughs> um, I did think about a reset system, but because of the complexity of this, that would probably take three months of work just to complete the the system it's it it would be pretty crazy you have to have a hundred to one splitter system um a lot more uh truck stations it's just crazy all right so let's go ahead and see this thing actually working so i'm going to go over here and look at our truck stations if you set a truck station to unload what's going to happen here it will not accept items on its belt until you give it power that is the entire premise of our logic. If I power this truck station, only then do I want the items to flow through it. So we'll, we'll see here we have turbo fuel, 
get my flashlight on, and a candy cane. I'll explain the candy cane later, but the turbo fuel we know is a hit. So if I power this on, it's going to go over here on this belt, and it's going to go to truck station number two. Truck station number two is also set to unload, and so it would sit here and wait. The third truck station is the exact same thing, set to unload, and we have silica waiting for this machine to get powered on. So let's go ahead and pretend we are setting up player one A1 ship. So I'll go ahead and pull this lever, and it went quick, but all the items got moved over to truck station number two. Now the other switch is player number two, guest board. It will turn on the second and third truck stations, so it will release both the turbo peel and the silica and the candy cane at the exact same time. So on our board here, we're either going to get silica if no ship was ever pulled, or we're going to get turbo peel and then silica. Now how do I always know to get turbo peel and not silica if both are released at the same time? Well, fairly easy. I used a Mark V belt for the turbo peel path and a Mark three belt for the silica path. So just, even if they're the exact same length, the turbo fuel will always win. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. Let's pull this lever. And there we go. We have our turbo fuel and then we have our silica. So on the game board, we would only see our turbo fuel. And of course, if we didn't have a ship set, no turbo fuel ever reaches reach middle truck station and only silica could be presented to the user. And that's pretty much it for the logic part. Now for the candy cane part. I have a smart splitter here that takes the candy cane out of the equation and actually takes it back to the back of the game board where all 100 logic boards are merged together so every potential candy cane comes to one spot. And we look up here, you'll see I have an assembler that I built to make a star. And I'll deliver that star to the winner room and who will be player one or two will, will show it next to their name there. Now how to do this is I primed an assembler with five decorations and three candy canes. It takes 20 candy canes in order to build a star. So remember it only took 17 hits to win the game. So if 17 candy canes come out of the logic gates it will start building the star. Now I have these things primed and uh, power sharded, so it's gonna try to build the star as fast as it can, but it does take a little bit of travel time. I didn't teleport the belt on this one. So about 30 seconds after you win the game, you'll see that star get created. And then if you want to get back to the game, you just come over here and get into your exit. But that's pretty much the uh, premise of Electronic Battleship. Um, I've got some stairs and things you can go around and look inside all the different logic gates. They're duplicates of each other, so once you see one, you see them all. Um, but that's how Battleship, Electronic Battleship, was created here. I hope you enjoy this. Um, it, it was definitely fun in certain times to actually create this. Other times it was, I'm like, why did I even start this project? But I wanted to share it to y'all. And we got it done by Christmas time too. December 25th is when I'm recording this and releasing this video. So it's your, my Christmas gift to all of y'all. Hope you enjoy it. Write a comment and if, if, let me know. If there is a bug, also let me know. I will revise it and then in the video description I'll update the download links and we'll have a version number. But as far as 1.0, I've tested it. Everything seems to work. So have a blast with it. Until next time, bye bye